So here's our 2D example, and this is very much like part one uh, you know, of your homework, project 1A, I guess. There's nine grid blocks, right? So in your, in your homework, there's only a well in the center, right, in your project. And also, there are, uh, it's fully insulated, so there's, there's no floor boundary conditions everywhere. Right? Whereas here, there's a constant pressure boundary condition on this side, no flow everywhere else. There's a constant rate, a constant rate producer here, and a constant bottom hole pressure well there in nine, okay? And so, if we just look block by block, right? so for block, this is block L equals one, or we also might have block I, J equals one, one, right? So for that block, that's the mass balance, right? So we're just summing up the fluxes coming in and equating it with the accumulation, right? Okay, so we just write down the full mass balance, even considering sort of artificial fluxes coming in from the outside, so that we can write those terms over there. But remember, like, you can imagine like there's a zero indice grid block here and a zero indice grid block there, so that these boundaries are at the halves, right? The I equal half is this boundary, the J equal half is that boundary, and that's where you get those T half comma one, T one comma half. Well, these are no flow boundaries, so both of these guys will be zero, so that's the full mass balance. So if you implement zero out those terms and then collect things, you get this, right? You get this equation. That becomes the first row in our stiffness, in our transmissibility matrix. Notice if, they're, if it's homogeneous, then you have a 2T on the diagonal, right? So if, the, if it's homogeneous, then that then those are just T and T. So you have a 2T on the diagonal. And remember, when you have no flow boundary conditions, it's just the number of neighbors, right? It's the number of neighbors, one, two. Two neighbors, two on the diagonal. So that's a check you, know, you can make. Right? So grid block two has three neighbors, one, two, three, and a no-flow boundary condition. The full mass balance equation at the top, this is a no-flow boundary, so the I equals two, J equals a half is this boundary. That's no flow, so that's zero. Put that in that equation and collect terms. You see, for the two grid block, you get three partial transmissibilities, or half, you know, half interblock transmissibilities. And of course, if they're homogeneous, that's a 3T corresponding to the three neighbors. All right. So for grid block three, you have a, part, a no flow here and a constant pressure boundary condition there. So, the, so remember, this is going to create like an extra 2T because of that guy. Because remember, we, we write we sort of write the flux between the center and the and the side, and that's over delta x over two. So then you get a two t for that one, right? And then of course on the bottom it's the same. You have three and a half is a zero. So that's the total mass balance up there. You plug in these conditions and rearrange things, and you're going to get this, right? So you get this. And of course, we, we're not looking at the Q vector right now, but you would ultimately have a contribution due to the boundary condition, this guy, in the Q vector. Right? We'll see that later. So that's the third row. The fourth row, it's pretty easy, just one no flow boundary condition, three neighbors, you get a 3T if it's homogeneous. Those are things to you know, watch, look for in your code so that you can, it'll help you or decide if you're doing the assembly correctly, right? You can always take your heterogeneous system and just plug in homogeneous numbers, and then you can look at these clues to see if you're getting the you know, right, right answer, All right? So the center one uh, is easy in that it doesn't have any neighbor, I mean, it's four neighbors, so you can get a 4T here, but you do have a constant rate uh, producer in that well, so that goes into the Q22 term or in this equation, we're using the L indices, so Q5. It's a fifth grid block. Q5 is going to have 
uh, a value equal to um, minus 10,000 or whatever the value was on, on the ending. Okay, so you do have a well there. Okay, So that becomes the fifth row. Uh, this one's more of the same, constant pressure boundary condition on that guy. Uh, this is very similar to what we've already seen. Two constant, uh, two no flow boundary conditions. So you get that guy. That's similar. So then the last one, of course, you have a constant bottom hole pressure well in. So it's a little different. You also have a no flow boundary condition and a constant pressure boundary condition. So you sort of have to take care of all of those things, right? So the no flow is easy. You just write the full up mass balance equation, but the T3 seven halves is zero. And then you get the two, two T3 uh, minus uh, times the, the uh, pressure on the boundary minus the pressure in the grid. And then additionally, uh, you have this term, right? And this comes from where this is your productivity index. This comes from the bottom hole pressure well, right? So when you plug both of those things in and then rearrange terms, right, you get the P33, two t minus 2T times minus P33. It gets pulled over over here and ends up here. You also have the J that ends up here, okay? And then also on the other side, do the J times the pressure in the well and the 2T times the pressure on the boundary, you end up with these terms over here that go into your Q vector. Right, so that's the hardest one, because it's sort of the most going on. But it's not that hard. Right? So again, that's what the transmissibility matrix looks like. Now you don't see a J here, because this is just the transmissibility matrix, and we, we have a separate matrix for J. Right? So for uniform permeability, you get this. And again, those, these are the observations I was trying to get you to look at. You know, if it's homogeneous, then you, you sort of get that structured pattern that you can verify. The accumulation is easy. And then you have this J matrix that's going to have that productivity index in the last entry associated with that bottom hole pressure well in that entry in the ninth, in the ninth grid block. Your Q vector, you have the three 2T PBs for the three blocks on the right boundary that have constant pressure boundary conditions. You have the constant rate well in Q5, and you have the constant bottom hole pressure well in Q9, in the phase form criteria. So that's your Q matrix. If you plug in some material properties, and the numbers are such that everything sort of works out very nicely, like for instance, uh, you know, your, your Accumulation all turns out to be one. Um, so if you plug in everything, then you get something. This is a, uh, your stiffness matrix. I, mean, I keep saying stiffness matrix. That's, that's lingo from finite element analysis. The transmissibility matrix uh, is there. Your Q vector is over there. Your B matrix is all ones. Your J matrix is all zeros except for the last entry. And so if you put it all together for an implicit solve, solving this equation implicitly from the zero to the first time step, these are the results you get over one time step. Or in steady state, if you, if you, if you, uh, if you take out the accumulation term, the B term, because you can solve the steady state equation and you get this guy. And so what you have here, what I'm giving you, this was posted to Canvas this morning, and it's under examples. Um, it's under files examples, 2D example. What I'm giving you is a verification problem for your code. You know the answer, at least for this, this set of conditions. I'm giving you the answer. So if you run your code on this example, and you get it right, you can have confidence that it will run correctly for your project. Now, there's a caveat in that to solve this problem, you actually have to implement more physics and more conditions than what we're asking you to on the project. Because on the project, it's, it's no flow all the way around. Right? So you, I mean, the only thing that you have to do to get this right is you have to get the, the uh, constant pressure boundary condition right. And, but if you do that, then you have, in fact, a, a 2D reservoir simulator that for this problem, single phase flow, is it's uh, got more features than, than CMG, right? Or at least one more. 
uh, in the terms of, you know, CMG doesn't even have constant buffer boundary condition, right? That's why we had to, you know, last Friday in the lab, we had to, like, create this little thin grid block and put a constant bottom hole pressure in there to fake, to fake a constant pressure boundary condition. So, you know, this, the simulator you're going to write actually has the ability to, well, if you write it to solve this problem, would have the ability to implement constant pressure boundary, true constant pressure boundary condition. So that's uh, that's a verification problem for for your homework. So for your, you know, for your project. So I showed you how to write a code. I gave you an example problem. There's no reason that you shouldn't all get it perfectly right. Right? Any questions?